Hello, this is Scott Shepard, and in this video, we are going to have five C programming interview questions, and I will try to give you the best answer for them. The first question is, what is the range of a 16-bit unsigned short and for an unsigned char? Well, the range for an unsigned char is 0 to 255. This is an 8-bit variable. And the range for an unsigned short in is 0 to um, 65,535. The second question is, what is the difference between the logical end and the bitwise end? And the difference between them is that the first one, the logical end, is used in complex decision-making statements. In this case, we have a decision-making here, in which we verify if B is greater than 10 and C is less than 40. If these two statements are true, are evaluated as true, both of them are evaluated as true, then we are going to print true logical end. If any of this statement is false, then we are going to print false logical end. And as we see, if we execute the program, the program because B is initialized with 30 and C is initialized with 35. After this piece of code executes, we are going to print the true logical end. True logical end. This is what it means. The bitwise end is used when we have to do bitwise operations. Bitwise operations are those operations which operates with bits of the variable, with the bits of a variable. In our case, we verify if 5 and 4 have a value which is different than 0, because in an if statement, a value which equals to 0 will be evaluated as false, and a value which is different than 0 then 0 will be evaluated as true. In our case here, we see that these two values have one bit in common, the fourth bit. So we are going to print true bitwise end. And th this is what we get here. The third question is, what is the difference between plus plus p and p plus plus? Well, the first one is called pre-incrementation, and the second one is called post-incrementation. Let's see the example. We have these three variables here, A, B, and C. Each of them is pre-initialized, is assigned to a value, to a certain value here, 0, 1, and 1 again. And we have here this operation, E equals C plus B plus plus. We have here post incrementation. This means that when the processor computes this operation, first is going to use this actual value of B in this statement here. So this equation will be A equals um, 1 plus 1. and then is going to increment the b variable. So at this spring here, variable a is going to have value as we see here. Variable a is equal to 2. Let's talk now about pre-incrementation. Incrementation is, is when plus plus is before the variable. So here in this statement, E equals C plus 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 P. Here, the processor is going to increment first the B variable, and after that is going to use its value in this operation. So this operation here will be equal to A equals one plus two. 
So the value of a in this print is going to be 3, as we see here. As we observe in, we also print in this print, we also print the b variable. As, and as we observe, in both cases, b is incremented. The difference is that post-incrementation first uses the current value of the b variable in the operation, and after that, after the operation is finished, is going to increment the b variable. In pre-incrementation, the, the compilator, the compilator, the processor is going to increment first the b variable, and after that, is going to use its value in operation. The fourth question is write the standard min macro. The min macro is a macro that takes two arguments and returns the minimum variable between them. This is the standard min macro which we have here. So min macro is going to receive two arguments a and b and is going to uh, return the smallest of them, the smaller variable between them. We do it this way. We check if a is less than b, and if yes, then a is going to be uh, returned. If not, then b is going to be returned. Let's see how to use it in an example. have this print here. So we print here uh, the minimum. So uh, in place of um, percent %d, we are going to print what mean macro returns. So between these two, the mean macro should return 5. And this is what we get here. Pay attention, please, to the way that you write this macro, because uh, you will have to use the braces, so also A and B should be placed in braces because um, in an interview questions or a technical interview, uh, the interviewer may uh, give you this input in which mean is called with, um, with this kind of computation, like 5 mi minus 2 and uh, 7 minus 6. In this case, 7 minus 6 is uh, 1, and uh, 5 minus 2 is uh, 3. But pay attention because this, is, this uh, macro is a preprocessor instruction. So what, uh, what this macro does is going to replace 5 minus 2 in, in, this, uh, in this place here. So if we have an example like we did before, this macro is uh, after preprocessing is going to look like this, uh, and and we don't have this. Uh, no, no, no. We will we keep the braces. We will keep the the braces. So we'll have five minus two. Is smaller than, um, I think it was seven minus six, and if yes then is going to um, to return uh, 5 minus 2 if otherwise will return uh, 7 minus 6 what i want you to pay attention here is that um, if we will not have this uh, braces here then this computation will be the braces between a variable and b variable, the computation will be quite wrong because we'll have something like uh, 5 minus 2 or smaller than uh, 7 minus 6. Right? And uh, this is not very good. The fifth question and the last is which is the best way to initialize a value with complementary of 0? Well, the best way to initialize a value, a variable with complementary of zero, is to do something like this and use the complementary operator. 
this way no matter of um, of the range of the variable this variable will be initialized with the complementary of zero complementary of zero means all other um, all other bits in that variable will be set to one thank you so much for watching this video if you like my channel please like and subscribe bye bye